This morning we want to continue on in our uh, transitions uh, series and we're going to be uh, exploring a little bit more this morning on how to deeply know God through this time. But I want to start off our message uh, by exploring a passage in Deuteronomy. Uh, we're going to be continuing on with uh, Moses and Joshua and how that transition happened. And so uh, Deuteronomy 31, I'll be reading verses 1 to 8. You can follow along behind me. Uh, it says this, When Moses had finished giving these instructions to all the people of Israel, he said, I am now 120 years old, and I am no longer able to lead you. The Lord has told me you will cross the river Jordan, but the Lord your God himself will cross over ahead of you. He will destroy the nations living there, and you will take possession of the land. Joshua will lead, will lead you across the river, just as the Lord has promised. The Lord will destroy the nations living in the land, uh, just as he destroyed Sinon and Og, and the kings of the Amorites. The Lord will hand, you, hand over to you the people who live there, and you must deal with them as I have commanded you. So be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, and do not panic uh, before them. For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. Then Moses called for Joshua, and the Israelites watched him. Uh, he said this to him, Be strong and courageous, for uh, you will lead these people into the land that the Lord swore to your ancestors. He would, not, he would give them. You are the one who will divide... Uh, you are the one who will divide it among them uh, for grants of the land. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord will personally go ahead of you, and you, he will be there with you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this message. And Lord, we know that this, these promises are still true today, that you don't abandon us, that you are with us. And uh, Lord, even though things may be scary or things may be uncertain, you go ahead before us. And Lord, we want to thank you for that promise that you've given us. So Lord, this morning as we explore your word, may it speak to us and may it speak to our hearts as we um, are challenged by it. We pray this in your name. Amen. When we look at this passage, we can see that Moses had been leading Israel for 40 years through the desert. That's a long time to be leading people. And I'm sure during that time that he would have gotten to know a lot, if not all, of the people that were there. He would have known them personally. And the more time he spent with them, the better he would have gotten to know them. And they would have gotten to know him as well. They cherished his leadership and they understood uh, where he was coming from because the Lord was with God, uh, Moses and leading him. They would have shared some great times. Like remember when God rained manna down on that day? Or when you hit the rock and water came out? It was so refreshing. What about that time that you went up on the mountain and we waited for you to come back? And you had some stone tablets with you that were given to you by the Lord. But now God is saying that there needs to be a transition. Something needs to change. Something needs to be done differently. Moses can't come into the promised land. But transitions can be hard. They force us from the familiar into the unknown. And sometimes we go kicking and screaming. Sometimes we even stay in the uncomfortable. Because at least we know what's going to happen or what's expected of us. But in the end, when it's all said and done, transitions happen, whether we like it or not. This reminds me of a, an experience that happened to me just recently. Many of you have had the opportunity to read Becky's posts on the adventure, if you will, that we had. Many of you know that a couple weeks ago I went on a hike with my boys. We left on Wednesday and got to the trailhead. We had about 15 kilometers to hike to our campsite that day. 
Uh, and we didn't want to be hiking in the dark, so we had to get moving. We started our hike about 12.30 or 1, and we had to cross a few rivers and bridges, uh, but we made it to our campsite by supper. We ate, and we went to bed by 9 o'clock. This is unusual because normally I go to bed around 11 or 12, but when you're out in the bush and there's no lights, you go to bed when it's dark. Um, when the sun goes down, you go to bed. When the sun comes up, you get up. So we got up around 5 o'clock and got ready. Um, and I felt like this was more like living like the Israelites. In the desert, there wouldn't have been lights. The moon would have been there, sure, but um, when there's no moon, it's dark. It's pitch black out there, and so you have the opportunity to sleep. As I woke the next morning, I felt strongly that God was telling me that I could not go forward. I could not go on this hike. I had to go back. It was like there was a wall stopping me. And I kind of pleaded with God a little bit, what's going on? Why do I have to leave? But I felt that God was telling me to go back to the trailhead and spend time with Him. To take some time and have a spiritual retreat with Him. This was a tough situation for me because I wanted to continue. We'd been planning for this uh, hike for a year. I wanted to be on it. And yet it was disappointing at the same time to have to turn around. To let my boys and the others go forward. All I could do was ask, why? Why, God, did you have me come this far and then have to tell me to turn around? But I had no choice. I had to obey. And you know, I think that a little bit of this is somehow how Moses felt at that time. I've led these people for so long, God, why can't I cross? Why can't I go into the promised land? Our passage says this. When Moses had finished giving these instructions to all the people of Israel, he said, Now I am 120 years old, and I am no longer to lead you. The Lord has told me, You will not cross the Jordan River, but the Lord your God himself will cross ahead of you. He will destroy the nations living there, and you will take possession of the land. Joshua will lead you across the river, just as the Lord had promised. Oftentimes, and especially during this time, there's a sense of missing out on something. I missed out on the hike and the beautiful views and experiences that would have come with that. I missed being there for my son in his time of need. The definition of transition is the process or a period of changing from one state or condition to another. Change needed to happen in Joshua. He was the new leader. God had given him that authority. However, in transition, in all transition, the things we know will be different. Sometimes change is good for us. Sometimes it leads us to a place where we need to be. Sometimes it can lead us to an opportunity to know God more deeply. When he had asked me to leave, that is definitely what happened. I got to know God more deeply through prayer and fasting during that time. And oftentimes, I'll share with you this morning, oftentimes during that time, Isaac was brought to my mind. I didn't know why at that point, but I knew that I needed to be praying for him during this time. And I got to know God deeply through this. Romans 12 says, Do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. As Christians, we are already different. And we view things differently from the rest of the world. Jesus was definitely different. Jesus was the Messiah. Jesus, uh, but Jesus didn't do what everyone expected the Messiah to do. 
The people expected Jesus would be a political force, a domineering military figure who would come to drive out the Romans and establish the kingdom of Israel in the same way that King David had done. They were expecting him to be a world-dominating power, a force to be reckoned with, a nation that paid homage to other nations. However, Jesus didn't fulfill that in any way, shape, or form. He was humble, unobtrusive, shunned, didn't be in the limelight. He was discouraged publicly, and he even went so far as to tell people not to tell about the miracles he was doing. Jesus did or said things that did not fit with what they expected. This didn't sound like a leader. Who was this man? He didn't meet their expectations. And they were oftentimes disillusioned and disappointed at the results. Isn't that like a lot of us these days? We don't know, uh, we don't have a kind of expectation on God to always do the things that we want Him to do or the things that we expect Him to do. There's no way, new way for God to do anything. We've seen it all, we've experienced it. And yet He surprises us. Don't we have difficulty sometimes seeing God at work? in ways that we don't seem maybe biblical to us. If we think back to the scripture reading this morning about the blind man that was healed by Jesus. He spit on him. In some translations it said he makes some mud and puts it on his eyes. If I was to do that to a blind man, I hope that someone would stop me. Because that's really gross, especially during COVID. It's strange and it's weird. It's not what we expect. And yet, this spit transformed the man's life. No one expected him to be able to see. No one expected that. But that's exactly what happened for this man. That was what was needed at that point. And there was no disappointment on that day. There was rejoicing. A blind man could now see again. But I want to take a minute and think about the changes that he had to go through now that he was able to see. His, night, his life was now different because of that sight. We oftentimes take our sight for granted. But here, he had it back. He could do things that he wanted to do without others helping him. He could walk around without walking into walls. His life was changed. The transition had happened. He no longer needed to beg for money. Or did he? Was he able to work? Did he have the skills he needed to do a job? We don't know. But what we do know is that his life was changed because he could see. And that in itself is life changing. As we go through this season of transition, things are going to be different. Things are not going to be the same. And that's okay. We have to remember that, that that is okay. One of the things I had to work through with God was letting my boys go. I've always been there for them. But on the hike, I had to let them go. Let them be the men that they are. And I remember spending a lot of time and prayer knowing that Isaac and Aiden are getting older. 
They're becoming young men. They need this opportunity, or they needed this opportunity to go out. And at the first opportunity, they definitely showed that they could do it. They were confronted and had to become adults as they were flown off the mountain. As they spent time in the hospital without one of their parents around. They can do it. They can take care of their self, themselves. And they are amazing young men. Secondly, as things transition, it gives us a chance to become involved. As transitions happen, there may be holes that are left, left to fill. At the beginning of August, we got a chance to pray for Paul and Janelle as they were transitioning into an exciting new role, opportunity of a lifetime as they moved to England. But as they transitioned to a new role there, there were holes left here because of their leadership. More noticeably, the holes in worship and in youth. There's opportunities for others to step in. There's opportunities for you to fill those roles. Just like the hole that has been left by Pastor Josh. And we will need to fill that role too. But that will come in time. God has given us, in 1 Peter it says this, God has given each of us a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts to use them well and to serve one another. I would love it if some of you would help out with the youth. I really would. I'm not saying that you need to keep up with them. I have trouble keeping up with them. But to be there for them, to be able to share and talk with them, a lot of them need guidance. A lot of them have questions. And they would love someone to talk to. The best part of youth oftentimes is after youth happens. In the informal time where we sit and we talk and we talk about life and they share. The events are fun and it is exciting during that time, but the more exciting time is afterwards when we get to share and talk and we see real life happen. It's a great opportunity to be able to pray with them, to be able to encourage them, and to be with them. But it's not only youth. It could be joining the worship team, or even making up a whole new team. Some of you don't know, Becky and I took up a new hobby in February. We started playing the ukulele together. We thought it would be an easy instrument. It's only got four strings. It's not. <laughs> but it's been a lot of fun learning it and spending that time together. And as I've shared this with some of you, I've found out that there's a lot of you here that also play the ukulele. What if we were to create a team and play up here and worship together or meet together and worship? doesn't have to be formal, but coming together and sharing these gifts that God has given us. These are just a few ideas of what we can do in the church. But what about outside the church? How can we get involved outside the church? A bunch of you wrote on the wall back there that Jesse uh, put up the question last week, how can we be a community of care? And a few of the responses were this, talk to my neighbors. It's always an encouraging time to share, find out how they're doing, be able to pray for them. Develop relationships in our lives. Listen instead of speaking over. Put aside differences and celebrate our mutual life, uh, lives of Jesus. Seeing Jesus in others. 
This is a hard one. Picking up trash when we see it. One of the things when I go in the bush, uh, a few others, when we hike, we always see garbage and we pick it up. And we always come out with more than what we came in with. Pursuing a relationship with my family. Helping out when we see a need. There's lots of opportunities to get involved. There's so many of them. Even coming up uh, next Saturday at the Community League, there's an opportunity here in Allendale to go and meet people. Meet people in the neighborhood where our church is located. Or what about bringing a friend to the women's retreat next Saturday? Or signing up if you haven't done so already? What about inviting someone to go for coffee with you? Just share life. There's so many ways to get involved. Imagine if you got involved with what's around you. How God could use you to show himself to others. It doesn't have to be a hardship. It doesn't have to be a difficult thing. God uses us to minister through us when we're doing something we love and enjoy. As we close this morning, I want us to think about how do we feel or how do we react to transitions? For most of us, we don't like them. We want things to stay the same. We want things to be predictable. There's comfort in that. But as we know, life can throw us some curveballs and it doesn't always stay the same. We may need to face some situations that we may not want to. And at the end of the day, we will see growth from facing whatever is in front of us, whatever is on our path. And as we face these things, there's an opportunity to know God more deeply. I've experienced this. I've experienced that if I hide or do, don't face something, I'll have to go through it again and again and again until I actually face it. That's when I'll see growth. True growth comes from us facing what is before us. Transitions are a part of life. Transitions are an opportunity to know God more deeply. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you put transitions before us. That you are helping us along the way. That you want to see us grow. You want us to uh, become stronger. Not only in our relationship with you, but in our relationship with others. And that, thing, that means that things can't stay the same. And so Lord, as we look at the transitions that we're going through, not only as a church, but individually, Lord, we pray for your help and guidance. We pray for your strength in order to go through them, knowing that you are with us and that you go before us just like you went before Joshua. You are preparing that way for us. And Lord, may we hold on to that promise as we go through this. So Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to get to know you more deeply. And may we come back willing and able to share how you've been working and encouraging us through this all. We pray this in your name. Amen.